Hey guys, you're watching Max's View. Today, I'll be showing you how I modified my carpet pythons enclosure to make it a little more ideal for them. But first, some announcements. I've got a lot of great videos coming your way. Since I just graduated from college, I'm looking to spend more time on this channel putting out better and higher quality videos. Videos coming your way is, of course, some hatching videos between snakes and crested geckos. I've got a lot of cool animals that are going to come out this season. Then this next week, I'll be going over to check out the facility for big country snake removal and check out some of the venomous species and other species that they work with. Following that, I'll be flying out to go land in Orlando, Florida, and then head over to Tampa to check out the Repticon and check out a a lot of awesome reptile keepers including David and Manny from Tiki's Geckos and then from there I'll be flying out to London England to drive around and check out some of the reptile shops there check out the countryside and bring you guys along with me this here's one of my carpet pythons Icarus and he is a very active animal as are many carpet pythons they are semi arboreal so if they can climb they will so today I'm going to show you the building process of a carpet python's enclosure to give him some space to climb around on. In the meantime, I'm going to put this guy up before he wears me out before I even get started. Alright, so some plies I'm going to be using for uh, this project is obviously having a tank, some branches for the carpet to climb on, uh, here's a longer one and two shorter ones, and some Lugardi uh, reptile bedding I'm going to put over. Uh, this product here to uh, seal it. It's called Gaps and Cracks. After 24 hours, uh, it will be dry and I will be able to uh, put the animal back in. Now something to remember about this stuff is that it's very sticky. Uh, it does stick to anything really it touches uh, and very quickly. Um, it takes a minute to dry so it's going to be malleable for a minute. So usually what I do is, uh, is I'll spray it on there, I'll have it set where I want it and then later I come with a plastic bag or what I really should have is gloves and I press it down and then I put another layer on and this helps it really stay um, where, I, where I like it to be. But like I said, I should have gloves, but uh, Lord forbid I get this in my beard. So this isn't really more about fumes because it doesn't put off so many crazy fumes as long as you're in a pretty ventilated area. Um, there's uh, a lot of air flowing through here. I got a fan on, but this beard has got to be protected. I cannot stress enough that it is very important to remain intentional with everything you use regarding this stuff. It's a little wobbly right now, but uh, this is the first layer. Um, this is just to kind of uh, get it forming to the ground there. And when I come back and make it a little more malleable, um, or when, when I come back and I start sticking it more to it, getting it more in place, uh, then that's when I'll really make sure that it's more than just where I want it, but how I like it. I added more dirt, let it dry, and I finally turned it on its side. So here's me vacuuming it and getting it a little more cleaned up. All right, so I've already started decorating it, but let's keep going. After letting it dry for 24 hours and redecorating it, I introduced the carpet python. All right, so here's the finished product. She loves it. She loves the climbing. She will go all throughout and just be able to climb. It gives her a lot more room to go around and be more of a natural carpet python. It does hold really well, and she looks awesome so there she is enjoying this anyway guys thanks so much for watching this video y'all be sure to like comment and subscribe and be sure to check out my new facebook page for my animal business max morphs anyway guys i'll see y'all next time